Wie ein Phantom Ein, zwei, drei Schüsse in die Luft, alle gucken hoch Hey everybody, it is as usual third Saturday of the month Dissect the song So for this month I have gone with a German selection This one is Namika's Phantom Phantom means ghost So um, if you're a speaker of any Germanic or Latin based language is typically you probably would have known that by now, you know, so to say. Um, so if you speak a Latin based language, this word is typically used across a lot of it. Sometimes the accent is different, but um, phantom basically in across a lot of different languages can mean um, the same thing. So yeah, it's, <laughs> so yeah, from one language to another. So I've got the lyrics and I'm ready to dissect. So um, this song, this particular artist, I really like her because she is uh she is born in germany german is i know that uh, that is her first language um yeah but i know that her roots are in morocco because i know that she did an album called nador um a few years back um that one was I mean, nador actually i looked that up because i i kept she had a the, the title song for that for that uh, album i was listening to it and i thought okay, like, what does Nador mean? Like, I literally thought it meant something in German, and I looked it up, and Nador is actually a city in in Morocco. It's I believe it's, like, closer to the ocean. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I looked that up. Um, but, yeah, so uh, a lot of her songs pretty much go back to uh, her Moroccan roots, and I kind of love that because, you know, especially, like, in Europe, there it's very diverse. There's a lot of uh, migration that does take place there, um, especially because with, like, I know that there's people who come from like different places within like the within so like south or um, east of the Mediterranean that do migrate up that way. So, you know, I, I think it's really cool that you know the people not only are they born in another in, a, in one country, they actually stay true to like the roots of which they came from. So it's true. You should never forget where you come from. So, yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna get started with this one. So the very first part of the song is basically the refrain. This is kind of like the hook that you're kind of kind of, you're gonna mainly see uh, repeated throughout the song. So it starts off as wie ein Phantom, ein zwei drei Schüsse in die Luft. So the first is, so wie ein Phantom. It means like a ghost. Wie can also mean how, but in depend but it depends on the context. So. You could say V as in like V feel costed us, like how much does this cost? Or you can say, um, um, it's been, uh, it's been jazz V das music, uh, der music, uh, die music. I, <laughs> yeah, um, the music. I think that music is feminine, weiblich. Yeah. So everything's fact checked on the screen. So, yeah, so you can use it as a way of saying, like, asking how something is done, or you can use it as a way of just saying that, like, of making a comparison. Wie ein Phantom. Ein, zwei, drei. Just, okay. Ein, zwei, drei. That's simple. It's just counting three times. Ein, zwei, drei. One, two, three. Schüsse in die Luft. Schüsse means, like, a sh like um, shot, um, a kick, or, like, an injection. Um, those are, like, what word reference has pretty much mentioned, but in context of this, uh, Luf means like breath or it can mean air. So from what I'm seeing is one, two, three, shot in, uh, shots in the air. Okay. Um, alle, alle gucken nur, no, nur ha. Um, so all looking or watching, um, only hi. So it's like every everyone ala can mean different things. It's also the same thing. It kind of has the same meaning as like uh, like tu or tut depending on like the gender, but tu or tu like um where the word all can mean everyone or everything. So um so when it comes to ala, you have to really to pay attention to the context. So it says ala guken. Um guken means like to look or to watch. So it means like everyone's watching. Uh, watching only high, so it's like everyone's only uh, no uh, no so everyone's always looking looking up, everyone. So like a ghost, one two three, shot in the dark. Everyone's looking only in the air, or only looking up. Jede Nacht, jede Tag, jeden Tag unterwegs, bis die bis die Engel mich holen. 
So, jede Nacht um, means every night, every day, underway, or um, unterwegs can also mean like in, in route, like en route, en route um, you know. Um, so, it's basically saying every night, every, uh, every day. Also, notice the fact that that Nacht, Nacht is also feminine. So, that's why it's jede instead of jeden. And I know that that is, that can be used in the accusative sense because jeden typically um, based on the ending en that typically will show you what gender it is so even if you don't know the genders from der die and das you can pretty much can um you can pretty much figure out what the gender is by the different cases um or the uh, the because the adjectives and the articles typically correspond with the noun so usually if you're seeing like something that has like let's say if you're talking about like your um like um like a um i'm trying to think of something to really make an example of like for example like um what's what is an uh okay so neutral neuter like the word das buch you may not automatically tell i mean you can you would automatically tell that it's neutral based on the article das but if you're looking at it in the context of okay like gender um, um, and the articles, the definite article is not there. You can t tell by the ending. Let's say you're talking about, um, uh, einem Buch. Like, so you're using the date of context. You can tell what, typically what gender it is by the ending of the article or the, or the, um, the ending of the adjective that's corresponding with that. Okay. Uh, so every night, every day, um, underway or in route, um, Bis die Engel mich hören. Okay, so bis means until. Bis die Engel, um, until the angel mich hören. Okay, so in German, sometimes things can be backwards. So it's like the case, because hören, or actually like that's kind of like the way that they would speak it. But hören is the actual, is the actual word. Um, in speech, um, certain times letters get dropped off, <laughs> you know, like going, gun, going, I'm going to, I'm gonna. So when you speak very quickly, words, uh, sometimes letters get dropped off. But hun, the, usually the ver verbs go to the end. Like you have the conjugation of, um, of whatever the main verb is. But then like if there's a secondary verb in the sentence, then it goes to the end. And then the, the object or the, um, like the the object is being acted upon or whoever is complete or whatever the you know the um, indirect object is and either one um they're typically going to be in the middle of the sentence it's very confusing um and i will actually i think i'm gonna actually probably make a video on uh german because i know it's so confusing and i just want to kind of share i probably will share um thoughts about how to kind of like make german less confusing <laughs> so uh yeah yeah, so until the angel mich, mich is the accusative form of me. So there's di, uh, mir, mir is dative. Uh, like when you're talking about like time or, you know, you're going to a particular place, like movement from one place to another, um, you know, like passing of time, typically you'll use dative. Like if you're asking someone how they're doing, you can say the gate is dear. Um, um, like that is you uh, informally, but uh, dative context. Accusative is like if you are the one that is that the subject is acting on. The subject is the angle, uh, the angle, yeah, the angel, and it's acting upon you. So bis die Engel mich hören, um, until the angel delivers me. Um, hören can also mean like to like to get or to call or to achieve. It depends on the context. So you can't always rely on Google Translate in this case. You have to really rely on the context of what is being of what is being spoken. If that makes sense. Okay, um, and then after that it says, Und sie jagen meinen Schatten. Okay, so, and they, Z can mean two, three different things. Depend so, Z actually means she in third person. And then Z can also mean they with lowercase. And then if you capitalize the S on Z, it can mean you formally speaking. So you have to depend, depend on the context. The only distinction that you have with like, Z, the thing is it just depends on who you're talking to. So like if you're noticing that like in third person, you're using Z to describe a female person, female pronoun, then you're going to see the conjugation is going to be conjugated in the, 
the verbs are going to be conjugated in the third person. So that's how you know that that's a female you're particularly talking about. If you're talking about they, it'll be a lowercase z, um, uh, s e a. Then you'll have the verb conjugated in that particular format. And then you'll also notice the difference between they and you formally speaking uh, when you see that the conjugation is going to, for they and and you formally, their conjugation is the same. Only difference is, is that one has a capitalized pronoun and, and the other one doesn't. In German, the personal pronoun, all personal pronouns except Z as in um, formally speaking, everything's lowercase. You don't even capitalize ich for me. You know, like in English, we capitalize the word I as in I am doing whatever. In German, they don't do that. And actually, I think they don't do that in a lot of different languages. So um, just as a context on that is in this case, they're talking about they. So it's saying, und sie jagen. So jagen is like, um, it's like to hunt or to follow. Again, depends on context. So meinen Schatten. So they hunt or they follow my shadow. Schatten is like shadow or um, shade. So meinen, meinen is, that's again with some letters dropped off. It would be meinen, which is the accusative form of saying mine. So it's like they, the object that's being acted upon is the shadow, Schatten. So that corresponds. So instead of saying mine, you would say meinen. So yeah. And then it says bis längst schon auf neue Mission. Okay, so bin, uh, I'm assuming that they're dropping off the pronoun on that because it would be ich bin, which means I am. So, uh, so it's like am. Um, and, and, uh, thanks basically means, um, like a long time, um, or like some time ago or for a long time, been thanks to, and for a long time, all I'm already on a new mission. Okay. And I can tell that that mission is, uh, feminine because Noya has the ER at the ending and typically in dative context, the, in, in the dative case, the... Uh, the adjective typically is going to take um, an ER at the end. So just so you know, um, and you can always tell if you use the dative, uh, if you're going to use the dative by the fact that ALF is in front of Noya. Um, typically ALF is a preposition. And usually when you see prepositions, you also use dative, the dative context. Okay. I also have some resource. I'm going to actually uh, link a playlist um, that um, is by um, learn German with Anya. She has a really great uh, set of videos that talks about all the four cases. So if you're confused when I'm talking about this, please refer to that because that was, she explains things really, really well in terms of how, uh, in detail of how these are used. So just for your reference. Um, uh, and then, um, and then it repeats again, the ein Phantom, like a ghost. So, yeah. Um, so like a ghost, one, two, three, shot in the, shots in the dark. Everyone's looking um, everyone is only looking up every day, every night, every day underway until the an angel delivers me and they follow my shadow. Um, for a long time, I've been, I am already on a new mission, like a ghost. So there you go. <laughs> That's the refrain. So the first verse starts, um, heute vog Morgenstrasse. So it means today, heute today, today vogue, tomorrow the street. Uh, Strasse means street. Um, it is a feminine word, so it would be die Strasse if you were talking about you know, any particular um, street. So Morgen also, Morgen can mean literally morning. So you can say Guten Morgen, you know, like good morning. But Morgen can, uh, Morgen can also mean tomorrow. It's kind of like how in Spanish you have mañana. Mañana means morning. Um, but then like you could also use mañana as talking about tomorrow. So it's like if you're talking about tomorrow morning, you can say um, hasta mañana en la ma mañana or something like that. I think it's really interesting. Um, okay, so um, tomorrow the street. Weil ich so gern das bin. Okay, so weil means like because it means because. So because I and uh, gerne can basically mean like. Something like something that you like to do. Like if you're trying to say like I like to drink coffee, you don't really have to say like ich liebe 
cafe. You really don't really need to do that. You can say, ich trinke gern cafe. Like, I like to drink coffee. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I drink coffee. I like to drink it, you know, so to say. Or like something is a preference. So it's like, because I am so, I am, ich so gern da bin. I like, it's, I don't know how to translate this literally because again, German, they have a way of just switching words up. So what I'm basically going to translate in context is, um, because I liked, I am very much there. So da means there. So it's like, um, and then there's ich bin. So you see, like, you'll see ich bin, but it's like, they're separated because of the fact that there's words in between there. Um, yeah. So because I'm very much there. Um, and then wo mich niemand erwartet. Okay. So wo means where. So where no one expects me. So it's like, I'm very much there, but no one expects me. So uh, where, um, yeah, so I'm very much there um, where no one expects me. Uh, again, that's mich, remember, accusative. So you're the one that's being acted on. You're the one that people are not expecting. And then schau, sie wollen es verreisen. Sehr reisen. Um, yeah, <laughs> so show is like a way of saying like show or performance or like sometimes in, in slang I know that it can also mean like cool or something like that or something like that. Um, again, there's different contexts. It just depends. Sie um, wollen es sehr reisen. So they want um, they want it like to like to sehr uh, reisen is like saying like to crush or to rip apart or to bring down in, in, in flames. So it's like at, at a performance or at a show, they want it to be like, crush. they want me to like kill it, so to say, you know how we say in English, you know, it's like, oh, we, they want me to kill it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be, it's got to be good. Um, rap, pop, ist so mich entscheiden. So it's like rap, pop, I, okay, soll comes from sollen, which basically means like to suggest or like, it, it's like, it's not like something you like must do. It's like something that you should do. Like I should de um, like decide myself. So mich entscheiden. Um, like I must de decide for myself. Aber das hier ist mein Film. But this, but that here is my film. This is my film. You know, like this is my life. Um, Sie können mich nicht greifen. Uh, they can they cannot me they cannot uh they can me not take one like help ones like so it's basically like the, like i was saying it's confusing <laughs> don't translate anything ger in german don't ever translate anything literally <laughs> because everything's so jumbled up um from like an english perspective so it's like they cannot um they cannot um help themselves to me or like take me so it's like almost like a like saying like they can't break me, um, and then it repeats again. Wie ein Phantom, zwei drei Schüssen du Luft, and then the second verse. We're gonna move to that one. So it says, Sie den Vorhang so seit welche Stadt ist es heute? So uh, uh, Sie basically is the imperative form of saying Zian. So it's like, if you're trying to say like, it's kind of like an English where you don't have to say like, you, you do this. You would just say, do this. You don't, you know, you wouldn't use the subject. It's just like, do this. Like if you're trying to say to someone, you don't run in the house, you would just say, don't run in the house. That's the imperative form of using that. So it's saying, uh, so Zian from what the translation I got was, it means like to accuse. Um, and then uh, den, den, that is also an accusative um, article um, for a masculine word. So forhang, uh, forhang is a, like a drape, like curtain, something you put on a window. Uh, Zuazite, on the side. So it's like to accuse the curtains on the side or something like that. I think it might mean something else, but uh, I'm probably going to look into that. Everything's fact checked on the screen. So I, I know that sometimes like I find like I have these translation tools because sometimes there's certain things I, that I miss because I do in terms of German, like I, 
can get the general context, but I know that sometimes there's always like slang or something like that that comes in between. I act actually feel like I learned so much, actually, you know, actually from doing these. So I feel like maybe I'm doing this more so for me than I am for you guys. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, so it's, I don't know if that's supposed to mean anything, but it's like to, um, like accusing the curtain on the side. Something like that. Um, Welche Stadt is this heute? Which city is it today? So I think it has to, I think it's referencing, uh, performances. So it's like, which city are we in today? So it's like, uh, like the curtains on the side. I think they're talking about like the stage, so to say. Ich vermisse mein Zuhause. Ich vermisse, um, this would be ich vermisse, but again, when you're speaking in, in a natural pace, like I mentioned, where it's, letters can get dropped off. So ich miss, ich vermisse, um, ich vermissen means like, vermissen means to, to miss, like I miss you. Like you can say ich dich vermissen, um, like, uh, uh, for me, yeah, ich dich vermisse. Yeah, like, I miss you. Um, actually, she does have a song, I think that's on this, I think it's on this album, but it's called Ich für dich vermissen, which means I want to miss you. So, yeah. Um, so it means I miss my house, like my home. Zuhause, like, I know that house can actually mean, like, um, house can basically mean house, but Zuhause is like home. So it's like, ich gehe zu Hause. I'm going home. So remember that. Zuhause is house, like is, no, Zuhause is home. And then Hause is, is like a house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, erste Reihe, erste Reihe voller Glatzen. So it says like first row. Um, erste is also like, a, is also an adjective because it's just stri describing the row. It is not a row. It is a first row. So the... Um, Raya is actually feminine, so that's why you're going to see an E at the end of Erste, because the adjectives correspond with the, uh, with the noun. We don't really do this in English, but also I noticed that from all the other languages that I know, particularly I know in French they do that too, I'm not necessarily, I know that in Italian they do that as well, but your articles and your adjectives have to correspond. If your noun is plural, your adjectives and your articles have to reflect that that is, that is plural, along with the gender. So it might be confusing, but again, that's why this, this playlist is linked below. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so erste Reihe voller, voller can basically mean like full. So like if you're saying like, like something is like sehr voll, like something is very full. So it's like the first row is full of and I looked, I was so confused when I looked this up. Glatzen, it means like bald heads or like skin heads. So I think what it's basically meaning, I think it's like in terms of like a blurry context. It's like the first row is full of like people's heads. I don't know. That, I think that's, that's basically the context I get from this. Um, und sie wollen, und sie wollen, dass ich schwach bin. Und sie wollen, you can tell by context, the Z is lowercase so they're talking about they because also wollen is the conjugation of they um for want so wollen itself that's actually the, the verb in, in the infinitive form but with like when you're conjugated conjugating it in the via as in we um or z as in they the conjugation doesn't change so you can tell that it's because of you can tell what that they're talking about they because the context it, the the conjugation so, sie wollen. If it was sie will, then it would mean she wants. Versus sie wollen means they want. Okay, and then if the sie was capitalized, then it would be you want, formally. <laughs> I don't know you, so I'm going to talk to you formally. <laughs> so, das ist schwach bin. Um, okay, das, um, that means like that I am, or that I weak or unstable am. So, they and they want that is um that i'm weak so it's basically like it's like and and they want like so it's basically their first row first yeah first row full of of bald head bald heads and they want that i am weak um doch sie doch sie sehen nur mein lachen so it's like doch I 
I mean, let me think about this. I think that with doch, um, I've noticed that it can be used as a way of saying yes. Um, and then also it can mean like a conjunction to say like, but, or however. Um, so in this context, I think it's like, um, doch, it's like, um, like, but they see only my laughter, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, und können, und können es nicht fassen. And it, and to be able to, it, this is an interesting conjugation, um, interesting sentence structure. Um, okay, so, and to be able to grab it, to not be able to grab it, I think, because S means it, but it wouldn't be kunin S, like, I know that that's not a conjugation, because S is third person conjugation, uh, as third person pronoun, kunin is either the infinitive verb, or, yeah, it's either the infinitive verb, or it's either, either conjugated in the via, we, or z they, uh, or Z uh, formal, um, so it's like and they're, and they're they they're not able to grab it. So I think that's like I think that's what it is because maybe in some cases like even in English sometimes we don't always pronounce the pronoun or we don't actually say the pronoun that goes with it. We can just say can't grab it. It's like oh you know what happened? Couldn't grab it. You know like sometimes we will say things like that, but we won't use the pronoun that corresponds with who couldn't grab it. If that makes sense. Um, fasten um, means like to grab or like, to, it doesn't have to necessarily mean like, yeah, fasten doesn't have to mean necessarily like to, to uh, grab something like physically, you can also mean like to get something, it can mean to understand, like to grasp understanding, like in the abstract sense, like to hold on or to contain something. So it can also mean in like the, um, in the, and that, and depending on that context. So um, and then it repeats the um, refrain, uh, refrain again. Wie ein Phantom, eins, zwei, drei. Okay, and then the last part is the bridge um, in, the, in the middle of the song. And so this one it says, Gestern uh, Frankfurt am Main. So Gestern means yesterday. So yesterday Frankfurt am Main. I looked this up because I was like, I know that main I, means something like I, I in English, I know that in English context, it probably means like to like, it means like something in like in terms of like, a, you know, something being like the main thing, because that's the cognate. I looked it up and it actually like am main basically means like at the capital or like at the main city. And I was like, I thought that was like, um, Hopf, Hofstadt, like like capital city. I thought that, that was the technical term that I've heard, but I guess that's another way of saying it. Um, am is, I believe is dative because it, it basically, I think it is, it's like where, like one of those contractions where when two, uh, two articles are together, they form a new one. So I think this means, I think this means alf plus dem. And I think they just smushed that together and it contracted to am. Because like anytime you're talking about something happening during a time of day, I've always, it's always am main. Or, or like, um, like am morgen, like in the morning, like, or um, am zon, zonstag, like, like, uh, like at Sunday or on Sunday, something like that. Um, so you'll see that. Um, and then heute Wien, morgen Schweiz, es geht... Alles so schnell. So it's today, Wien, morgen Schweiz. Okay, so um, when we're talking about cities or countries, um, heute Wien, I know that, that Wien is a city, I want to say in, it could be Austria. Again, everything's fact checked on the screen because I have heard of the city, but I can't remember if it was if it's in Austria or if it's in Germany. Um, again, fact checked. And then morgen Schweiz means tomorrow. So today, Wien tomorrow switzerland so schweiz um is switzerland es geht alles so schnell it's uh, like it's it's going like everything is going so fast even 5000 leute um eben basically means like um it can basically mean like just now also in depending on their context it can also mean like flat or like a level or like smooth or something like that but in this context 
I think it's really just talking about like now, like even now, 5,000 people. 5,000 people. We're learning some numbers today. Eins, zwei, drei. Yeah, eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. 5,000 people. So notice that like with thousand, it sounds like thousand. So it, th that is a cognate that actually means the same thing. Um, 5,000 Leuten, die schreiben und jetzt wieder allein im, im Hotel. Um, schreiben. Okay. Um, yeah, so die schreiben. I think, I think I missed that one. I think I want to say that means like, uh, I want to say that that means like, sh um, like schreiben, but also I think it means like schreien. I think like, um, like, like the scream, like screaming or something like that. Like, um, that's it, because I think that's short for schreien, yeah, um, like, and, uh, die is also the feminine article, um, but it also can be plural, so usually when things are plural, they always, so just think of it, plurals are kind of like wannabe women, you know, um, please, no one take that the wrong way, I mean, like, I'm saying, it's just, it's trying to get into the feminine club, if that makes sense, like, um, in terms of, like, the article, so think of it that way, plurals, the article for plural acts like a feminine but the only th difference is, is that the ending for plural nouns is going to be different so that's how you can tell that something is not feminine uh is not feminine but plural because the ending of the noun is different but the article is going to take the feminine article which is going to be which is which is d okay um just just think of it that way <laughs> um yeah and then yeah so the screams and now again alone in the hotel so it's like screaming it's like just now five thousand people the screaming and now again alone in a hotel so think of a line a line sounds like alone so think so you can coordinate that those context there okay um im hotel um im that i think that that is the contraction of in plus dem so it creates, so it contracts to im. So you can tell that hotel, I believe, is, I want to say is nuta, das hotel. I've heard that. So, and nuta can sometimes take the, in, depending on the cases, will take the same con, uh, article as the mannish, um, masculine uh, and nouns. So just remember that. Um, and then, und sie wollen die Magie gern verstehen. Uh, so and they want the magic really well to under um, to understand um, Yeah, I hope that makes sense, but basically it's like and they want the magic the Maggie Gan Gan is like it's like a positive adjective. It's like saying yeah um, and then um, also Yeah, and for stand um, For stay in uh, it basically means to understand Okay uh, yeah, so they they want to under they really want to understand the magic. Ich verstehe sie ja nicht einmal selbst. So it's, I understand it or I understand them. Uh, ja ja nicht ja nicht like ja basically means yes, but um, in this context, um, ja can sometimes means like uh, yeah like it can be confirming something. Uh, like you can say na ja, like of course, it, like there's na klar, which kind of means like, a, it, which means the same thing. There's natürlich, which means of course or naturally. Um, but basically, uh, ja can also just be like there to just agree. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, yeah. Um, so it's basically, I understand them. I don't understand them because nicht means is negating. I understand them. I don't understand them. Uh, einmal means once. Um, it's, so it's like uh, once. Zelp means like itself or by yourself or alone. So it's like zelp, like mein zelp means like uh, myself. So I think what she's what she's saying is it's like I have never once understood it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I've never understood the magic or whatever. Uh, und erklär, erklär, 
und erklar und erklärlich und erkläre. That's kind of hard to say. Um, because especially with the umlaute, it kind of like alters your your expectation of what that how that's pronounced. Und erklärliche uh, Seiten. So it's like unexplicable or like unexplainable time, like point in time. Seiten means time, so point in time. Um, manchmal kann ich nicht greifen. So manchmal, like sometimes I can't, I can't grasp it. Because um, greifen, I think we used that earlier. We, we talked about that. Yeah. So it's like to take or one, uh, take or understand or um, to help oneself or to be in touch with even. So it's like sometimes I can't even understand it. Uh, and then it repeats again. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Um, I think that like music is very helpful because a lot of times, especially like, cause music is very much informal. Like no one speaks to people, no one writes song lyrics in formal lyrics, you know, in formal uh, grammar. So I think it's really helpful, especially if you're trying to uh, grasp like colloquial, uh, colloquial um, like speak. Because a lot of times, like, not to say that people speak like this specifically, um, depending on, you know, like, the song or whatnot, but a lot of the, the terms or the, the um, I, I forget what they call it. There's, like, a term for, I think it's called Übertragen. I think that's what it calls, but it's, like, slang. Um, like, where, like, you know, there's things that have one meaning, but then they can mean different contexts. I love doing these because it kind of forces me to realize that I, I feel like in the process I'm learning with you. I have been learning German for two years, and, I like, I wouldn't say, like, I'm 100% fluent. I don't know everything, but I have been able to get to a point where I've been able to make conversations without using Google Translate as often. Like, especially, like, when I'm, like, particularly, like, with Portuguese, I have a habit of every other word I'm like I don't know that word I don't know that word or sometimes I'll use Spanish because Spanish is like default like my default when it comes to Portuguese because Portuguese is similar to Spanish so um getting to a point where you're using Google, Google Translate less when it comes to to this because I feel like sometimes like there are like there are plenty of things in this in these lyrics that I'm like, yeah, I, I know what those mean, like right off the top of my head. And there's some words I've never seen before. And so when I do these series every every month, it kind of helps me because I'm learning in the process with you guys. So I'm just sharing with you guys what I'm learning. And I think that's what teaching really is, is that you learn things and then you just teach what you know to other people. So we're sharing the knowledge. <laughs> yeah. And also, if there's anything that you feel like maybe I missed on, a con on context, you're more than welcome to correct me, especially if you speak German natively. Again, we're all here to learn. So yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next month on the Dissect a Song series.